All right. <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good evening, everyone. Okay, this is Dr. Mehek here. And uh, uh, today we are going to discuss about the tips and tricks of SBS. Uh, let me introduce myself that I am one of the mentors working uh, with uh, Med Institute and this is our second batch whom we are teaching. So uh, today the main purpose of this session is to just teach the students about how to tackle with the SPS because a lot of questions we are getting from the students is that, that how to um, like uh, attempt the MCQs because whenever a single there is a change in single word in any of the statement or if there is any change in the uh, you know the answer the, kid, the students are not able to pick that answer so uh, today we will talk about how the exams is going to be like how the SPS are coming in exams how we are going to prepare the students according to these SPS and how the students at the end of the like all the things how students are able to grab uh, which MCQs is correct and how to um, pick the, the right one so firstly let's discuss about the most important thing is that why we keep on talking about the SPS 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 like every time after the lectures, while conducting the lectures, the, our team keep on talking about the SPS, that SPS are very important. So the importance of SPS, let's just discuss about a bit. Uh, uh, then we will move to the next slide and next discussion. Firstly, let me explain briefly that why SPS is important. Because SPS familiarizes us with the exam format. We are done with that, like we keep on studying all the time. We obviously we have done MBBS and we are done higher. Most of them us are in training and most of us have uh, attempted a lot of higher exams. So we keep on touch with the books, but every exam have their own um, set of pattern and their own important, you know, topics from which the exams are like uh, questions are coming. Like if we talk about the MRCOG exam, exams, MRCOG exam, so they have their own question bank. They have their own important topic from which they are giving the questions. So we have to learn from which topics are important so that it's better to do the smart study rather than grasping all the knowledge because we are human beings and we are not able to memorize all the things. It's important to have the concept of every single thing that we are reading because obviously we are dealing with a human being and we need to learn as much as we can. And as a doctor, we all know that we never you know then doctor studies has never been ended but the thing is that it is very important to learn the pattern of that particular exam to pass and the exam the main motto of that exam is not only to gain the knowledge but to pass the exam and for that purpose we have to do the smart study along with getting the knowledge from the lectures and from the books what we are doing is that we are getting the knowledge but from SPS we learn how exams are going to be conducted and SPS provide us with a format by which the exam MCQs are coming and how we are going to attempt the exams otherwise we will not be able to like recall all the knowledge in this exam day it's very difficult to memorize and then recall all the knowledge immediately when some uh, important mcqs come in front of us or if someone asks even an important question we are not able to recall that things the reason is that we are uh, if it's a human being or memory we have to recall the things so sbs are basically all those recalls which we memorize and keep on repeating and at the time of exam we are able to reproduce that knowledge so in easy words, it's like just familiarizes them with the exam format. Moreover, the another important thing is that with the help of SPS, we can test our knowledge. First, we will memorize the thing. We will understand the thing from the lectures. We understand the topic completely. Then in order to reproduce that knowledge, these MCQs has been designed by the exam examiners in MRCOG exam and by the different type of, you know, different type of uh, academies, different type of, you know, uh, recalls, past papers and different type of uh, uh, question banks have, have set these SBS so that we can then reproduce that memory and then we can uh, uh, we can check our knowledge either we are be, we are able to answer that question or not so testing our knowledge is another way uh, another important thing by, which can be done through these SPAs then retention of the key concept 
it's it's like i don't know about there may be many brilliant students in the world but for me i have to recall all the things again and again otherwise i'm not able to like recall the things uh, like after two to three months if i'm like away from the books i am not able to recall that things i always forget so i have to keep in touch myself with the book so this is very important the essays are the important source by which we can retain the knowledge by lectures, we grasp the knowledge, we grasp the concept. But in order to retain the knowledge, these SBAs are the way by which we can retain that key concept and by which we can, we will be able to retain this concept. Otherwise, no one can, like, you know, if you keep on memorizing and ratifying the things at the end, we are not able to reproduce. Again, I'm saying that we are not able to reproduce the knowledge. With the help of these SBAs, what we can do is that if we keep on repeating them, then that SBAs are struck in our mind. And whenever similar type of questions come in exam, we immediately, without thinking, uh, uh, giving a like, you know, giving a, uh, without, uh, we, like within seconds, we are able to immediately answer that question just because we have memorized that thing and which can only be done by repeating that SBAs. Okay, then, with the help of these SPS, we can see that how which area of our like preparation is weak, and we can focus on that area more. Most of the students have a lot of problem with the anatomy. The reason is that they up to five, final year when we come, we are more into the you know the clinical thing rather than the like than the basic knowledge. Most of the time, this happens to almost every uh, like student. A lot of our students are, are most of the time they are like uh, away from the studies from the couple of from the couple of you know years. It's like um, from the and most of them are in doing clinical practice. And in clinical practice, we are doing medicine, we are doing pharm pharmacology, but we are away from the basic knowledge. So most of the students are feeling challenged in anatomy, in biophysics, in physiology, and in embryology, because these are not the subjects that we are regularly reading or recalling things. So this is with the help of these SBAs, we can see that which area of our knowledge is weak, and then we can focus on that particular area. So all together, these SBAs have a lot of importance. After lecture, we always focus on doing SPS rather than repeating the lectures. The reason is that just to memorize those things that are very important according to the exam point of view, because not everything is coming in exam. Exam have a very particular, you know, question bank and they are very much particular about very particular um, topics that are very much related to the real life. So this is the importance of the SPS. So I know, I, I, I believe that now everyone knows that how SPS are important and why we should focus on them. Like we, need to if we are doing the preparation we can do it like we can uh do two to three uh we can do uh like if we divide the our precious time into the like three months 1.5 months i believe that we should give to the lectures and all the things all the getting getting all the knowledge and 1.5 month we should give on repeating all these mcqs so that these whatever we learn from these lectures should imprint our mind and at the time of exam we need to like we can reproduce them because in exam we have a lot of pressure so it's very difficult to recall the thing firstly secondly time management is another very important challenging step that we have to focus uh, 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 while uh, like uh, while doing the preparation otherwise we will not be able to uh, perform well at the day of the you know judgment that is our exam day so moving to the next slide. So now let's talk about the tips that uh, are very important for the exam day. I believe that this is something that is very important that all the students should know about it because exam is not something that like uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, like I, I believe that you all have gone through some uh, international arm. Um, uh, you know local exams obviously we have done mbbs and uh, uh, most of them you have of them you have done uh, have done fcps part one most of them has done play most of them most of you all have done mrc p maybe uh, but the thing is that uh, all ex every exam has some tips and tricks that all the students should know before attempting the exam in order to get maximum marks and those students who utilize that tips at the day of exam are the one who get a lot of good more. I mean, you who can get, you know, 80% or 90% marks because uh, if we're teaching all the students, all the students are obviously at an equal level, but certain students got 90 plus marks, some students got 80 plus marks, 
the only reason is it's not like their knowledge is less or something like that. Our preparation is not very much good. There is another factor that is the exam day because some of them get confused on the day of exam. Some of them are not able to manage the time. Some of them are not able to you know the recall the knowledge some of them has not gone through uh, like you know recall in a very good way some have, of them have not done sbs in a very good way so for me if uh, being a mentor what like uh, we have observed from the and take the feedback from last badge and i have obviously given the exam and uh, my observation according to the like On the day of exam, one thing I uh, must tell you is time management. You know what? The time management is the key to success. Sometimes what happens is that we people spend a lot of time on the few initial questions. And then when time passes, then we will get so much, you know, uh, compressed that we are not able to like uh, focus on the next MCQ. So ideally, we should practice in such a way that we should give every, um, you know, MCQs one and maximum 1.5 minutes. There are two set of papers. Paper A and Paper B. Okay, Paper A is uh, contains hundred uh, questions and Paper B contains another hundred questions. There is a break of you know half an hour between Paper A and Paper B. For Paper A, it's two point five hours, and five paper for Paper B, it is again two point five hours. If we utilize the dead time of paper in a good way, then it's very easy to complete not only complete the paper in time, but we will be able to. Uh, uh, like uh, to read our questions and we can uh, confirm that either we are like we have done all things correct again again we can read all the paper uh, and we can check our flag questions we can check our wrong questions we can check our all questions but if we are not able to manage the initial half an hour and we give maximum two to three minutes to first few questions then we will be so short of time that we will not be able to complete the paper in time and then we will get so much pressure that we will uh, not able to memorize the thing that we are very good in sometimes we are not able to like we are very good in anatomy i have done very good anatomy but at that time of pressure i was not able to recall the thing uh, easy things so it is ideally very important to utilize the time justicely okay so just have a good sleep you one day before exam close all the books have a good nap in the morning take a good breakfast offer your prayers and then go to the exam hall and just don't study like one night before the exam just close all the books because whatever you have done uh it's done <laughs> okay so it's ideally it's, I, I will prefer not to read on the last day of exam okay otherwise you will be like you will have you know mixture of all the whatever you have repeat it is a mixture of all the you know uh, you can say the fruit chart has been made in your mind. You will not be able to recall anything uh, at the time of exam. And if you have poor sleep, then definitely your brain will be, uh, you know, this. Um, you, you, your brain, brain will be numb at the time of exam and you will not be able to recall the things. Secondly, another important thing, because I have conducted, I, I have been conducting the SPS sessions have been conducted in the group by, my, by me. Lecture has been conducted by Dr. Subul. So as far as like I have observed my students, what they are doing is this batch as well as the previous batch that I have taught. The most important, like most common mistake they are doing was this, the keyword. Why I'm focusing, and when I was doing the workshop, I will tell you about the workshop in the next slide. What is our work, workshop and what is the value of that workshop? But before that, let me tell you that what I'm talking, what, what about the keywords? Every SBA has some keywords on the basis of which we are differentiating that MCQs, particular MCQs from the other MCQs. So we have to just find out that keyword. After finding that keyword, we will very easily answer the question. Even if we don't know the answer of the question, what we can do is that we can do it by exclusion method. The reason is that exclusion method means that we will check either the other answers are correct or wrong and by that way we can find out the correct answer okay at least so keyword is one of the most important thing most of the time what we, students were doing is that they were not focusing on the keyword because they have done the ratification because of that rata, uh, rata they were not whenever there is a because um, I uh, although everyone is saying that MRCOG is uh, all about you know recalls recalls definitely definitely sixty to seventy percent is all about recall, but let me tell you that they used to change a bit of either the statement or either the option they have given 
uh, below okay so keywords is very important for you people to learn and this can only be learned by attempting a lot of all MC, uh, SPS if you keep on attempting as much SPS as you can try to attempt as much all the sources all the sources if you are like uh, attempting multiple sources in this way you will be able to find out a lot of different variations and in, in this way you will be able to find out the keywords and with the help of these keywords you can definitely immediately pick to able to pick the correct answer this time i, I will tell you what sps uh, there was a spa uh, regarding iron deficiency anemia and the answer was not iron deficiency anemia because ferritin was correct at, in that statement how this with the help of this ferritin the student were able to pick the lead poisoning a lot of our brilliant students picked the lead poisoning. The reason was that because they know the knowledge, although they don't know about anything that lead poisoning was doing and it's something like that. But because of exclusion method, because all other, they know the finding of iron deficiency anemia, they know the finding of megaloblastic anemia. In this way, by the exclusion method, they were able to pick the correct answer. That's why I'm focusing on the word keyword. Rest. After, you know, like after man time management and finding the keywords, the another important thing is that MRCOG, the beauty of MRCOG is that MRCOG don't have any negative marking. So attempt all the question. Either you know the answer, you don't know the answer, okay? Just uh, on the basis of guess, a lot of time the six senses, you know, right. And six sense mean whatever is coming in your, uh, after reading the statement, if you don't know the answer, whatever comes in first in your mind, I believe it's my like practical experience that I believe that that answer would be most most time most of the time correct. So try to choose that or whatever your heart is saying and whatever your brain is saying, whatever your recall your knowledge is saying. Okay, what you can do is that. Uh, what you can do is that uh, you can uh, flag. Uh, but if you're not very much sure about it or you forget the answer, you can flag that question. Try to attempt it and flag that question. After attempting all the questions questions you can come back and uh you can uh, read that flag question and you can like answer if you are think that this is not answered you can change your answer the another important thing is that flag question will save your time because it's very difficult to first uh, do all the question and then, then re read or reproof proofread all the questions so it's better to flag those questions in which you are not very much sure and if you are very much sure about any question just attempt it if you are not sure about any question Attempt it and do flag it because flag after, uh, you know, attempting all the questions, you can come back and you can check your flag questions. And as I told you before, there's no negative marking. So please students attempt all the questions. I encourage every student that don't leave any question, whatever it comes in your mind, in your knowledge, try to correlate and try to attempt a question. Maybe there is a possibility that that question's answers comes correct. Okay. Then proofread if time allows. If you get extra time, a lot of time you can get, you will get the extra time. Paper one, most of the time you get extra time. I got like 30 minutes extra. So I proofread all the paper before like submitting the paper. So after flag question, once you are done with flag and once you are done with all the questions and flag questions, then what you can do is that you can proofread the at, uh, all the questions if you want to. Okay. And if you are um, like not very much sure and not very much confident, and then you can proofread all the questions again. Okay. Another very important thing is that uh, stay calm and focused. You people have given your maximum. Okay. Be like before exam. So this is the time to reproduce whatever you have done. Okay. So don't get panic. It is not end of the world. I'm sure that whatever you, whoever is studying and giving his her hundred percent will surely like go through this exam in first attempt, I'm 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 a hundred percent sure because a lot a lot of students. Uh, one of the my student I remember our uh, who joined our academy. You know, that was a challenging case for us to be very honest. He she joined uh, like forty five or thirty days uh, like before the exam, and that was a very you know challenging case for us. And um, mashallah, she has got I think eighty plus percent. I and uh, she passed the exam. So it's all about how much dedicated you are and how much. Uh, like energy you are spending on that exam so if you are like very much sincere you believe me you will all pass just give your 100 percent to the exam and rest leave on allah stay calm if you are like uh, everyone if anyone of you have tachycardia keep chocolate with you or you can use beta blocker as well okay so the last thing is that uh hydrated and stay energetic uh try to sleep have a good sleep okay um
do uh, your offer your prayer like sleep earlier close your book a day before exam take a good nap and in the morning good breakfast go to exam talk to your friends do chit chat and then attempt the exam and come back and don't uh, uh discuss your exam with anyone otherwise you will get so much you know that you this uh, uh stress because uh after discussing the answer with the colleagues a lot of everyone is having different answer and everyone because at that time we are not able recalls uh, have a lot of mistakes the reason is that because we are not able to uh, uh recall everything correct students are not able to uh, recall everything correct and whatever comes in their mind and the way they have interpreted the exam everyone is saying that this is my answer and it is correct because of this and this is my answer so you got panic so whenever you come after attempting the exam close all the things and don't discuss with your paper and leave it on the exam of on the day of judgment i believe that you all will pass the exam okay inshallah if you give, have given your maximum in Okay, this is all about the exam tips and tricks, uh, tricks. Okay, about the SPS, why SPS is important. Now, what we are doing, uh, like uh, my institute, as I am the, one of the mentor in my institute, so I will definitely tell you what strategy we are uh, applying and what strategy we have applied in our previous batch, and we have got max, excellent results. I, I was not very much like uh, uh, sure uh, sure about that result. And believe me, our maximum, you know, like 70 to 80% of students got 80 plus marks because of that strategy. And that is very fruitful strategy. What we are like teaching our students is that try to learn the first try to uh, learn the topic from the lecture because lectures are very important. Dr. Sumal has conveyed the lectures in a very amazing way. Okay, but suppose if you are not the member of our team, no worries. You can use utilize your book, but like whatever source you are using. But as far as I am like uh, uh, telling about my team and my, uh, uh, you know, my people, Dr. Sumal has given the lecture in such a way that it contains every single thing related to that topic. Suppose we are talking about the anatomy, whatever it's come to the MRCOG anatomy, it's, she has given all the knowledge. Rest anatomy is not coming in MRCOG exam, therefore we don't teach the students because smart it's MRCOG is all about smart study. Because in MRCOG, head anatomy is not coming too much, you know, brain anatomy is not coming too much. MRCOG is all about pelvis, premium, abdomen, okay? Upper limb, lower limb, a bit those which are related to the pregnant female and the baby that has been delivered so we keep we need to focus on that anatomy rather than we will keep on studying all the neuroanatomy and all of the other anatomy of the other organs it's useless because it's not coming in exam and the surgeries has a set pattern of exam so we have to follow that so once we are done lecture is full-fledged after reading the lecture, I believe that you people don't need to open the book. And we encourage our students to, yeah, like we, we, we are very much sure that you people don't need to open the book. So we told our student that it's their choice. Either they want to open the book, it's up to them. But for us, they don't need to, they can close the book and just focus on the lecture. Okay. So once we are done with the lecture, after that, we, in our telegram, we keep on discussing all the MCQs. We have a lot of pools and we discuss all the pools. Pass MRCOG, SBA Catherine. We have our own separate pool for which is given in the form of MOOC. Okay, once we are done with all the pools on the uh, S, uh, pool uh, of SBS on the Telegram group, we have uh, our MOOC on the website. We have organized that MOOC, particularly for the students. That is a that is bit difficult from the paper. This uh, our mocks are a bit uh, difficult from the exam paper. We said that because we don't know, although we keep on saying that recalls, exam is all about recall, 60 to 70 percent. But sometimes we are not sure that either they will like exam can change anyone. There is not ha any hard and fast rule. So for that purpose, we have designed our own mock and our own SPS that has been uploaded on the our website. So after SPS discussion in the Telegram group, in which we allow the students to ask as much questions as they can. And we mentor are 24 seven available for our students to keep answering their queries. After that, once done with the subject, that subject student used to attempt the mock. And then they can, they know that which area of that particular subjects they are weak and they need to focus on. Okay, once we are done, when our students are done with the mock, okay, then, uh, uh, like it's 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 keep on going the lectures and the that particular subject SBS and MOOCs. After that, we plan to do the year-wise recall discussion. 
okay for that purpose it's already uploaded with the correct key on our website but our med institute last time we conducted a workshop that is a very very healthy workshop we have conducted it was a like workshop of 12 to 14 days and trust me that was an amazing workshop a lot of mcqs that has been uploaded and have been rooming a lot of in the a lot of telegram groups the answer were incorrect and we were able to find out the correct answer and we teach them in the group with the mutual discussion with the students because students obviously have completed the course and they have a lot of knowledge so with mutual discussion we come to the conclusion about the correct result and we told the students that why this answer is correct and why this answer is not correct this has been done on our workshop that will be conducted this year as well this for this batch uh, almost on november or this month of december okay after that we have three exam oriented big move on our website that are set on according to the exam pattern with the time management thing okay so that student feel have a feeling of that they are sitting in the exam with that much pressure and with that particular number of mcqs that has been coming in the exam so that they can have the feeling of real exam in this way we prepare our students for the exam and i believe that after all these efforts from mutually from the students and from the uh, uh from the students and from the team uh, i believe that no one will uh, you know fail the fail the i guarantee no one will fail the exam okay so students uh, i think i keep on talking 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 so till now anyone have any questions at uh, till now they can unmute and they can ask so that we can move to the next slide anyone have any question although i was telling about the basic uh, things uh, related to the exam but if you want any question related to exam or the day of exam or anything you want to discuss you can ask me okay yes 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 uh, see i uh, see the thing is that it's not like we are promoting our group and we are saying that this and that but trust me lectures are more designed in such a way that they contain each and everything that your books have your essential lecture has been taken from has been made from essential from your richa and from your oxford so they have contained every single thing that is particularly in important regarding to the exam and they have been taken from all these books so after taking the lecture you don't need to read the book you don't need to open the book trust me but the thing is that it is your choice most of the students want to read the book or just want to go through the book or you just um, like for their satisfaction we never discourage any students to not open the book but the thing is that if you ask me about my uh, team and the lectures let me uh, tell you that they are complete package that lecture along with our sps and mock is a complete package after doing that i believe that you people will be like 80% prepared but the thing is that uh, if you want to have get some students as you know like very much uh, concerned about getting more and more and more knowledge for that purpose if you want to get more knowledge then what you can do is that you can open the book for your satisfaction but after two to three att uh, attempting two to three lectures i believe that you people don't need to open the book then you will be like in a much satisfied and you will uh, you will Uh, like uh, close definitely close the book because these lectures are so much you know so much um, made in such a way that they are so much understandable and after taking the lectures you, you all the queries has been like you know um, cleared so you don't need to open the book okay so let's move to the next uh, topic okay this is uh, i just want to show that this is all the feedback that we have got from our uh, students okay uh, at the day of when they, before the result students were very much you know nervous because uh, once uh, because after doing the exam what they have done is that they start discussing the these mcqs in the group and whatever comes in any students mind they just uh, like uh, answer and you know break the recall according to um her answer his answer did you get my point but like the thing is that they break the uh, recall in such a way that their answer is correct so students are very much confused that's why i'm saying that don't need to discuss mcqs after attempting the exam because it will make you very much stressful and that 20 to 15 to 20 days that you spend before the exams are help for you Bef uh, instead of discussing that uh, mcqs with your colleagues uh, try to utilize that time and do pray for yourself and just focus on like your 
next move just for, and leave your result on Allah because you have given your 100% and that's what you can do. This is what it, it's in your hand. Rest you don't ha have, for, you know, you you uh, you can't uh, predict the result. You can't say anything about the result. But what you can do is that you can give your 100% and that's in your hand. That's it. Then pray, pray, pray. I believe that with such prayer and with this maximum effort, you guys can easily pass the exam. So this is all the feedback that we got. See, uh, I, I was telling you that 82%, 86%, 90%, this 77%, maximum students got 80 plus and the rest of the student got 70 plus marks. And 100% uh, uh, results of a student got, all the student passed the exam. Not even a single student of our uh, last batch failed the exam. So I, we were very much happy and like, I just wanted to share this success with you people. So now this is all the feedback that we got from, you can see doctor, you can see the Dr. Sumbul's, uh, uh, you know, these lectures, everyone was uh, praising the Dr. Sumbul's lecture. She has conveyed the lectures in very smooth way. Trust me, uh, if uh, I wish I <laughs> I could be her student, <laughs> but I, I, I passed the exam like uh, before. Otherwise, I I, I got a lot of uh, feedback from my friends, my colleague friends, because I also told them to join my group and they joined and they told me, everyone was giving me that feedback that after listening to Dr. Sumbul's, you know, uh, uh, lectures we are not uh, we we close the book and i'm not opening the book most of the my colleagues are the one who have like uh, who have a clinical not clinical gap who have this uh, educational gap of uh, six to seven years because clinically they are active but educationally this anatomy, anatomy from basic subjects anatomy biochem pharmacology they are very much away from that subject so they told me that it's very difficult to do but after uh, taking this course and lecture they are very much satisfied Yeah, our students got 91% marks. 90, a lot of students in 90s, 80s, and 70s. Trust, trust me. So we were very much, much happy after we celebrate this result. So let's talk about uh, our, let's, okay. So I was telling you about the recall workshop because this, uh, every year, like last year, the recall workshop was not only attended by our students because our students, we offered them uh, who took the this uh, session has been offered this recall workshop as a gift sometimes. But the thing is that a lot of students from outside who were, who has joined other academies has joined just our recall workshop. And they were very, very happy from after at the end of this, this recall workshop because this is a recall workshop is of 12 days. And in this, um, recall workshop we conduct like every day we attempt one paper just like exam oriented i we used to give one minute to once uh, every student one minute uh, to attempt the question and after that uh after the whole session like uh, after attempting 180 to 190 questions and the day, same day we allow the student to discuss all the mcqs and if they have any question related to that particular topic not only that mcqs any but that particular topic if they have any question they can ask in that session and we keep on answering them we discuss the answers we discuss the re, uh, patient the students queries and in this way a lot of this but that was a very healthy session because a lot of students were answering the questions a lot of questions uh, students have a lot of queries in this way uh, other students were also benefited so that's workshop is of 12 days. So the purpose of that workshop is uh, we uh, revise all the questions, all the year wise questions. We revise all the year wise questions from the last, uh, you know, uh, uh, five to six years that, that are very close to the exam because before that, all the recalls are not very much necessary. But from the last five to six uh, years, recall is very important because 70 to 80 percent of MCQs has been coming from these recalls. Then after attempting the recalls, we allow the students to, they can, uh, so they can ask MCQs from that particular topic. Not only that recall, they can ask if they have any query related to any topic at the end of the session, they can ask. Because a lot of MCQs are coming from a single topic. So in this way, they will be able to, you know, ask the question, they will be able to uh, 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 discuss, their, they give their opinion and they can, uh, a lot of MCQs has been covered in a single discussion. Another important thing of that purpose was that uh, one question has been, you know, framed um, in a different way. They used to give the diagram. They used to, they, so they used to like, uh, sometimes diagrams are coming in the exam. So what we can do is that what we used to do in the, this uh, workshop is that after attempting the other questions, we sometimes provide with the mnemonics to the students and we provide the diagram so that uh, in uh, having all the descriptions so that students will be able to uh, memorize that particular topic, okay, without any, uh, you know, without any fault. 
after that, another important purpose of that recall workshop was that we used to break down that SPS. As I told you before, in that particular workshop, I remember every day I used to tell them that this is the this is the uh, keyword and that's that's the reason this is the answer a lot of times students will tell me that we discussed this question and you told me this answer because they were not picking up the keywords then i used to tell them that in that question keyword was that and today keyword is that so in this way i used to differentiate that how these questions are different how these answers are different okay okay students just one second give me one minute Okay, so another and another important tip, uh, tip I used to like teach my students were that in the workshop I taught my students was that exclusion method. That is another very important method that you all should know while attempting the MCQs because sometimes we are not able to answer all remember all the options and sometimes they change the option. As I told you before that sometimes the statement is would be the same but in the below option they used to change the option so in that uh, in that questions how you are going to attempt that question is that exclusion method okay so you people know that if one answer is wrong or other other options are wrong why they are wrong and if all the wrong there must be one answer that should be very close or either the that is a correct one. So in this exclusion method, with the help of this exclusion method, you can be able to find the correct answer. Okay. So next, review the mock test. Uh, uh, okay, mock test. After after uh, all these things, students were like sometime uh, last time the students were gifted with a big mock and they attempted and they after the uh, attempting we also reviewed that mock and we discussed that mock. So in this way, a lot of you know uh, um, uh, students have gone through a lot of study material, a lot of SPS, and hence they were fully prepared to uh, on the day of the exam. They were fully prepared and they knew that if this if a question is coming in this way, they will be able to attempt it. And if the question is coming this way, they will be able to uh, tackle how they, uh, they will be able to tackle that answer. So uh, while attempting, if some students are having, uh, you know, difficulty in that particular topic, we used to teach them uh, uh, that topic uh, as well. So uh, uh, at the end of the session, they keep on asking the questions and that, that session keep on like uh, for more than two to uh, five hours and students keep on asking even at the till night, they keep on asking the questions and we keep on ask, answering them just to make sure that they know all, each and everything. So this is the purpose of our workshop that in our workshop, we uh, the purpose of uh, is that students know all the SPS that have like has been uh, has come in the exam, which exam topics are coming and which topics are very high yield and from where the MCQ are coming and how the mcqs are coming this is very important thing if the people know how the mcqs are coming in the exam they know then they will be able to you know uh, study uh, according to uh, according to that way and hence they will be able to attempt the exam uh, because exam study is something different and ability to attempt the exam is something different. Most of the students have a lot of knowledge. I have seen that a lot of students have a lot of knowledge. When, but when come, it comes out to be the MCQs, they were not able to reproduce their MCQs and they were not able to reproduce their knowledge because they have not gone through such SBAs and such workshops and such exam orient orientations. So it is important for you to attempt read the lecture it is important for you to read the books memorize the thing but again it is important to uh, that you know that uh, how these uh you know this um uh, knowledge can be utilized by attempting the mcqs okay because time is so short in the exam that you one minute is very much less and it's very difficult if you people are not very much oriented through the these SPS, you will be will never be able to attempt the question okay because one minute is very you know it will take uh, almost if you are not very much well prepared it will take one minute to read the statement and after reading you didn't get the too much time to you know reproduce the knowledge but if you have gone through a lot of SPS, you immediately pick the keywords and you immediately see the options and then you immediately will be able to attempt the mcqs okay this is all about the recall and the workshop and everything i told you about okay so uh, any any questions at the moment? Okay, uh, I have some questions. Uh, oh, shoot. Oh, just one second. Am I audible? Okay. 
okay sorry okay okay so sorry okay let's just now okay um any questions okay thank you thank you students thank you i thought that i i, I initially i mute the i muted and i thought i'm still on mute okay any question uh, till now um today the purpose of this session was just to like uh, make you oriented according to the exam uh so that you people know that how the exam is coming so now we are going to uh discuss some sps So we are going to uh, now discuss some SPS and the tips and tricks how we are going to attempt these MCQs, okay? Before that, if you people have any uh, questions, you can ask so that we can sort it out before attempting the MCQs. Any questions so far? Okay, it's mean that you are particularly clear about how what how the SPS are coming and uh, what how you are going to attend the exam. Now we are going to discuss some SPS. So we I will give you I will uh, firstly we will talk about the question and I will give you one minute and after uh, you people can type the answer here and after one minute then we will discuss what are the keywords in that particular scenario on which on the basis of which we attempted this answer we uh, put uh, pick these answers and why other answers are incorrect so this is the first question a 23 year old patient present to the emergency department with sudden onset of severe abdominal lower abdominal and pelvic pain History reveals she normally has regularly 28-day cycle, but she missed her last period. Past medical history revealed two termination of pregnancy produced in the past few years. The most recent one six months ago. She smoked five cigarettes per day. On examination, she has lower abdominal tenderness and on vaginal examination, there is cervical tenderness. Observation are as following. Temperature 37.2, blood pressure 100 by 60, Heart rate 110, respiratory rate 16, urine sample and the blood test abated. What is the most likely diagnosis? You can type your answer in the chat box. Let me give you one minute and then we will discuss the answer. Okay, so Pyle has answered C. Okay, I, I need more students to answer the question. Okay, very well, Mona, very well, Safia, very well. Very well, students. Very nice, very nice. Okay, Zunera, very good. Okay. All right, okay. So I think uh, most of the students have answered this question. So let's let's break this SPA. So you people are you are absolutely right. The answer is ectopic pregnancy. So why is it ectopic pregnancy and why it is not pelvic inflammatory disease? Why it is not endometritis? Why it is not pyelonephritis? Why it is not appendicitis? Firstly, she is a twenty three year old emergency department with the lower abdominal and pelvic pain. Pelvic pain and lower abdominal pain can happen in pelvic inflammatory disease. Sudden, obviously, is uh, something that is more related to the ectopic pregnancy. But yeah, pelvic inflammatory disease, endometritis, there is lower abdominal pain. But not sudden, but severe and lower abdominal pain happen. History reveals she normally has regular cycle. She has normal regular cycle, but she missed her last period. Okay, so it seems that she missed her last period. In pelvic inflammatory disease, student uh, patient has the regular periods. Endometritis, there is a possibility that patient has the missed period because endometritis, uh, sorry, endometritis uh, is inflammation. No, 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 no. You have regular period. Pyelonephritis period is regular. Appendicitis period, period is regular. So this is the key word where we need to check that she has missed last period. Past medical history revealed two termination of pregnancies. Termination of pregnancies, uh, there is a possibility that uh, instrumentation has been done or there is a possibility that patient is having PID or infection, okay? The most recent one, six months ago. Six months ago, she was having termination of pregnancy. She smoked five cigarettes a day. On examination, she has lower abdominal tenderness and on vaginal examination, there is cervical tenderness. So the key word in this whole scenario is one is the cervical tenderness and one is the missed period. Pelvic inflammatory disease, there is cervical tenderness. 
but it is to uh, inf infection and inflammation and there should be temperature. So here the in ectopic pregnancy, there is no temperature. It's mean that uh, uh, in ectopic pregnancy, there is no temperature. Here there is no temperature. So pelvic inflammatory disease is ruled out because in pelvic inflammatory disease, patients usually have lower abdominal pain not always, but the thing is that maximum of the time, because this is infection, and infection always presents with fever. So there is temperature. Patient is having temperature. Okay. And periods is regular in pelvic inflammatory disease. There is no any hard and fast rule that there is any problem with the patient with pelvic inflammatory disease. Endometritis is again the inflammation, infection, and infection always presents with the fever. Okay. So pyelonephritis, pyelonephritis is basically the um, uh, infection of upper. Uh, uh, you know, urinary tract infection. So infection always present with infection and uh, uh, appendicitis. Again, patient is having nausea, vomiting, and again have the fever. A DLC is raised, although the blood and urine sample is uh, awaited, still patients usually have uh, fever. So here the most likely, uh, the presentation on the basis of two keywords, that one is cervical tenderness, but in pyelonephritis and appendicitis, there is no cervical tenderness. Cervical tenderness is only positive in pelvic inflammatory disease and ectopic pregnancy. And if we rule out between, if uh, which uh, see between the two the ectopic pregnancy why it should be because it's the patient have all the time the cycle is regular and now she has the missed period so it's mean that she's pregnant so uh, on the basis of these two keywords we choose the answer ectopic pregnancy okay this is the way you will break the answer you will see sometimes there is very close correlation between the pelvic inflammatory disease and the pyelonephritis uh, uh sorry uh, uh, pylo, uh this um uh, appendicitis. A uh, uh, few of the MCQs that we will discuss in a workshop while attempting the workshop, there are very close correlation between the pelvic inflammatory disease and that is appendicitis. So only on, there was a one point on which we rule out between pelvic inflammatory disease and appendicitis was that patient was having pain in the, you know, this lower pelvis. And on the basis of that, all the things were similar. On the basis of that, uh, we uh, go towards the pelvic inflammatory disease because blood and urine sample were not given. Nausea and vomiting was also present with the pelvic inflammatory disease there was no examination finding so we go for that uh we will discuss while uh, doing the workshop we will surely discuss all the mcqs and i will keep on telling you the how we are sps are different from each other and how what are the keywords so this is what i'm just uh, this is only the one spa i'm telling you that what are the keywords and how we break this spa so the answer is ectopic pregnancy you people are completely all right the patient is most likely to have ruptured ectopic pregnancy the history of multiple termination of pregnancy as i told you before that um, um, suggest that her conception method, uh, contraception methods are not reliable and her missed period is uh, suggestive she can may currently be pregnant. There is no temperature or vaginal discharge. Okay, so PID is rule out. Vaginal discharge is there is no uh, vaginal discharge. In PID, there is always vaginal discharge along with the fever. So uh, there is no temperature, so there is no infection. Okay, and there is no nausea, vomiting, and right sided, you know, this uh, rebound tenderness, then it's like very less likely that it would be appendicitis so the only uh, most related you know this uh uh and endometritis, it's very difficult. Uh, like the patient, have, if a termination of pregnancy has been done, endometritis. What is endometritis, by the way? Endometritis is basically infection that has been feel like female carries after, you know, the uh, delivery, okay, at the uh, postpartum period, okay, whenever she gets the invention, this is endometritis. So, so after six months of, you know, this termination of pregnancy, is very less likely that she might have endometritis. So this is how you have the clear concept, and this is how we are going to teach you, you know, what are the key points on we, the basis of which we are answering each question each spa okay so we are done with this spa any questions so far okay okay one more thing i would like to tell you as you people all are i think uh, in our uh, this uh, free group as well there in our not only in, in our uh, you know paid group our free group all the time discussion has been happening there are two i think uh, sessions that has been conducted freely and which we keep on discussing SBS and you know dr sadia and dr uh, you know our team has been so much active okay you you people are in that free group as well uh, from uh, on which the link has been shared dear students how can you say that Okay, in which Dr. Sadia has been conducting, uh, uh, has conducted the session, you know, like one hour before I was saying that um, that session is very, you know, uh, fruitful. Kind do attend these sessions because in these sessions and SBS are uh, 
uh, you know, we are going through the SPS and, you know, SPS are the best way to memorize the thing. If you are like want to gain the knowledge, then attend the lecture. But if you focus on the exam and your main purpose is obviously to pass the exam, that is the primary goal. For that purpose, you know, you need to attempt as much SPS as you can. Okay, now let's move to the second topic. A 27-year-old woman presenting the history of vaginal spotting and cramping abdominal pain. She has an eight-week history of amenorrhea. On examination, urinary pregnancy test is positive and the cervix is open and blood is noted around the os. What is the likely diagnosis? Antipartum hemorrhage, missed miscarriage, inevitable miscarriage, threatened miscarriage, or complete miscarriage. Okay, so most of the students are answering, some are answering C, some are answering D. Okay, so let's break these MCQs and then we will uh, see which group is correct. But don't get disheartened. This is very confusing MC, another confusing SPA. And a lot of MCQs are coming from this, uh, you know, this uh, topic, uh, this topic, a lot of MCQs are coming. This is one MCQ, a lot of MCQs are coming from this topic, especially on threatened miscarriage and this inevitable miscarriage. But by the way, the answer is inevitable miscarriage. Why it is inevitable miscarriage? At the moment, you people know that patient is pregnant, that pregnancy test is positive. So it is miscarriage. But what kind of miscarriage is that? See, the cervix is open and blood is noted around the ass. If it is threatened miscarriage, then cervix is never open. If in threatened miscarriage, cervix is not open, Okay, and cardiac activity can be seen on the, you know, there is spotting, but cervix is not open and moreover cardiac activity is present in threatened miscarriage. But in inevitable miscarriage, basically patient is have cervix is open and blood is noted around the house. Okay, in inevitable miscarriage. In miss miscarriage, only uh, the, you know, this, uh, um, this, you know, fetus is present, but there is no cardiac activity. Then we will, there is CRL is present. Sometimes there is, uh, you, know, you know, this belighted ovum. Sometimes in which there is no cardiac activity and only sac is present. Sometimes what happens is that fetus is present, but there is no cardiac activity, okay, in miss miscarriage. And in complete miscarriage, all, all the, you know, there is no sac, nothing, and there is no blood, and fetus has been completely removed, okay. And if we talk about the incomplete miscarriage, if we talk about the incomplete miscarriage, in incomplete miscarriage, the return product of conceptions are present inside the uterus. Okay, so let's uh, discuss all the different type of, you know, uh, miscarriages on the next slide. Okay, let's discuss about the mis mis uh, different type of miscarriages. So this is inevitable miscarriage. Why we are saying that this is inevitable miscarriage? The cervix is open and the, uh, you know, the patient is ongoing bleeding. This, that's why. Okay, if it is certain miscarriage, ongoing pregnancy with the presence of vaginal bleeding, but the thing is that cardiac cervix is not open and the cardiac activity is present, but there is just the spotting. Then it is, we used to say that it is threatened miscarriage. If the patient's cervix is open and there is no cardiac activity and the blood is seen on the os, then it is inevitable miscarriage, students. If all the completely productive conception has been removed from the uterus and uterus is completely clear, then it is complete miscarriage. What about the incomplete miscarriage? In incomplete miscarriage, retained productive conceptions are present in the uterus, okay? Okay, it basically service is open, but the pregnancy tissue remain in the uterus or inevitable miscarriage, uh, uh, service is open, but also the productive conception is present in the uterus. Pregnancy will proceed on to an incomplete or complete miscarriage, okay? There might be the possibility in inevitable miscarriage that the, there is a complete miscarriage or there's an incomplete miscarriage, okay? And recurrent miscarriage, you know, if, uh, if more than two miscarriages has been happened in a, like, uh, in before 24 weeks, okay, before 24 weeks, then it is said to be uh, two, sorry, three or more than three pregnancies, you know, before 24 weeks, um, uh, there's a loss of pregnancy, then we will consider that recurrent miscarriage. Okay, so I hope you got the answer. Okay, there are some. Um, all right, so it's it's uh, student is C. Okay, uh, it, it's D. Sorry, not threatened miscarriage. So um, I forget the options. What are the options? Just we, we just one second. Now it is threatened. It is not threatened miscarriage, student. Again, I'm telling you, the cervix is open and blood is noted around the os. Okay, if the there is cardiac activity, cervix is closed and blood is patient is having vaginal spotting, then we will said say that it is threatened miscarriage. It is inevitable miscarriage. That's the keyword you have to remember in the exam. These are the keywords on which you will pick the MCQs. Okay, let's talk about the third SPA. Let's break this SPA. Okay, till now, uh, anyone of you have any question, please kindly ask. 
so that we can move to the next slide. Anyone of you have any, uh, you can ask at the end of the session as well question. These are just the basic questions I have picked from uh, different topics. You know, they are mostly, most of the students have a lot of confusion in the clinical management and data interpretation and, you know, um, these are uh, what you can say the biophysics and these topics these things that most of the students are having uh queries the reason is that these mcqs are very closely related to each other and you have to interpret the data rest of the you know anatomy biochemistry physics they are the uh, you know uh, like um, they are the uh, key concepts. They are just the key concept. They had the particular and fixed information that you have to uh, memorize. But the thing is that in these data interpretation and clinical management thing, you need to make the concepts. Otherwise you will not be able to attempt the MCQs and ABGs is quite difficult. And these data interpretation things are really difficult. WHO, you know, criteria we have to remember in certain things, pump counts, if you talk about, if you talk about, you know, this some uh, evolutions, uh, you know, uh, uh, and uh, this uh, the WHO criteria uh, and evolution, uh, evolution uh, problem, WHO criteria, they, again, uh, this, um, you know, um, what you, epidemiology, these things are very difficult, you know, or, because in that we have to have a concept. And for that purpose, you have to remember the keywords and the concept for that purpose, okay? Okay, next we will go for another MCQs. You are asked to see a 42-year-old woman due to pelvic pain and PV discharge. Okay, now the female is 42-year-old. She's having pelvic pain and she is having PV discharge. And this patient was also having IUCD, fitted for emergency contraceptive contraception four years ago. She was four years from the last four years. She has been having this IUCD fitted. Okay, you send the swab. The microscopy reveal sulfur granules. Now the keywords here is that. There is sulfur granules, and they are asking about the organism. So, uh, which organism is uh, closely related to IUCD and uh, forming the sulfur granules? So, what is your answer, students? Let me give you one minute, and then we will discuss this SPA. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm waiting for your answer, students. Okay, so sorry. Okay, very, very well done. Very, very well done. It's actinomyces isaii. The reason is that it is the only organism that is forming the sulfur granules. Jardinella vaginalis is not forming sulfur granules. Chlamydia trachomonas doesn't form any kind of granules, and group B streptococcus is not forming any granules. And moreover, patient is she she's having PID, but PID can be caused by many organisms. Okay, sometimes uh, let's discuss what kind of questions are coming related to the PID. Pelvic inflammatory disease. Pelvic inflammatory disease is a very broad topic. The reason is that a lot of organism has been responsible for causing the infection in the females. Now, in this particular question, there are two key points. One is the female is having IUCD. In IUCD, this organism is very much responsible. Another important thing, three, four questions are related to this organism. They will most probably ask about uh, what is uh, this organism. So this is gram-positive, okay? Gram-positive organisms, sometimes they used to ask that. that uh, sometimes they did, don't mention that. Uh, they used to mention what is the likely causative organism. They can mention that gram-positive organism or gram-negative organism. These kind of things they used to mention in the um, sometime in the exam. Okay, So we should know that uh, this is gram-positive, facultative, and anaerobe. While teaching microbiology, that is most probably will be taught by, my, by me. Uh, I will keep on telling you what kind of SPS are coming and I will, because as, uh, this uh, micro, in microbiology, they used to ask about the nature of that bacteria. Like there is either it is gram positive, gram negative, if gram positive, then facultative and aerobe, uh, aerobe, these kind of questions they keep on asking. Okay. Another important thing is that the, with the pelvic inflammatory disease, they keep on asking about uh, different organisms. Sometimes they give about Jardinella vaginalis, in which they give you clue cells. Okay, clue cells is particularly related to the Jardinella vaginalis, and moreover, it will uh, make this you know 
uh, you know this uh, uh, yellow, uh, yellowish color of discharge jardinella vaginalis if uh, they talk about the trachomonas vaginalis what happens is that they have the greenish you know discharge along with the itching trachomonas vaginalis and it is flagella okay uh, flag it is a protozoa trachomonas vaginalis is a protozoa so they particularly sometimes ask about the organism is they don't give trachomonas vaginalis instead they give you bacteria virus and protozoa sometimes you have to take that uh, the nature of that uh, you know organism and its bacteria its virus its uh, protozoa so this this is the way by which they are giving the mcqs there are a lot of ways by which they can give you one single mcqs or a lot of mcqs has been given from a single topic so they sometimes they give you group b streptococcus a group b streptococcus never causes pid but the significance is that in gynaeops what is the significance of this group b streptococcus because this causes neonatal sepsis so this is a very hot topic in the gyne if you are working in the gyne department you know that how important this group B streptococcus is, particularly in the last trimester of the female, you know, pregnancy. Uh, otherwise, it's also important because it causes pneumonitis, meningitis. But the thing is that in female, particularly pregnancy, group B streptococcus is responsible for causing neonatal sepsis, and it is very important to manage in those females who are going through the vaginal delivery. So uh, chlamydia, chlamydia is one of the most important and most common organism that is responsible for causing, you know, this uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. And most important, the chlamydia, what, whenever they, uh, like, uh, they give the question related to the chlamydia, they give you deep, uh, they give you this uh, urea as well because chlamydia not only causes pid along with that it also causes urinary symptoms in the female 50 percent of the female chlamydia is asymptomatic but if, whenever it becomes symptomatic in the female or in the male it presents with in discharge along with this uh, urinary symptoms this is the way how we will memorize the things this is the way we are teaching our students and this is the way you will have to differentiate differentiate between different organisms and how they are causing the disease in a you know, particular human being and how their disease is presented in that, with, the, with which symptoms they are presented in a particular uh, human being, okay? So here the answer is actinomyces is highly. Let's move to the SPA. So I told you about the jardinella vaginella, chlamydia, trachomonas, how they are asking the questions. And, and then the most, most important thing is that about the organ in microbiology, they divided the section in such a way that they ask about the organism firstly. Secondly, they ask about the sign and symptoms related to that organism. Thirdly, they ask about the uh, diagnosis. They will most importantly ask that what will you do for actinomyces post uh, easily? What will you do jardinella vaginalis? For jardinella vaginalis, you will do the, you know, you will take the high vaginal swab and you will check with the microscopy, okay? And then you will see that uh, crew cells are present similarly, okay? So they will ask about the organism and their uh, diagnosis. After she, just, uh, just about cephalis, we will talk about cephalis. They will ask about the net test and about their PCR and uh, uh, their, uh, you know, uh, non-treponema and treponema testing for that, uh, you know, after that, uh, after diagnosis, they will ask about the treatment. Very important thing. They will ask about, in the microbiology, they will ask about the treatment. For example, for echinomyces isidae, what is the treatment of choice? That is penicillin and amoxicillin for 5 to 7 days. Sometimes we have to give IV. Okay. So you have to memorize a single topic in such a way. You have to divide the topic in this way and then you have to memorize the things. In this way, you will never forget. You will relate the things and you will never forget that SPS. Okay, so our answer is actinomyces is a rare, but it is an old exam favorite, very favorite questions, you know. Uh, you will see an, in a lot of MCQs. If the question mentions sulfur, uh, then think actinomyces. Pelvic actinomyosis is predominantly associated with intrauterine contraceptive device. It usually presents with a history of prolonged use, less than two, more than two years, sorry. And symptom of fever, vaginal discharge, pelvic and abdominal pain, and weight loss. So the answer is actinomyces. Okay. This is again uh, a bit of little bit of advertisement for for my uh, you know uh, team. Okay, because we have been putting a lot of effort. I, I mean, everyone is putting obviously, but we uh, we try our best that our every student get maximum marks. It's not about just the pass. We just we just want them to like you know to achieve the maximum marks, and you know like. Uh, when, we, uh, when the result were announced literally we celebrate this result and we were so much happy just like that my result were announced me dr sumbul and dr madura we celebrated this result and we have the feeling that we got our result uh, because uh, students you know the first the student for teachers students if get the good marks at the like if they get you know the desired marks and uh, achievement then it's like achievement for the mentors as well 
so that was a very big achievement for the very first batch because that was the very first batch obviously you know everything was uh, a bit of you know mingled up we were not able to like uh, uh, sometimes we we're not able to you know uh, 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 there are a lot of things that were uh, you know mixed up but the thing is that at the end a very good we were like uh, we got the very excellent results and feedback from the students so this time we were very much confident we are repeating the same strategy uh, with a bit of you know modification obviously on the basis of student feedback we are just modify our strategy but the thing is that trust me if you people are following that strategy you will 100% achieve more than 70 to 80% of the result and 90% most of the time most of the students got 90% marks you can see that or how they are praising dr sumbul dr madhura and all our mentor and the team okay so marks and students and everything okay just let take the answer and then we will talk about yeah that movie was dr sadia you 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 know that we that movement was magical you know we were having the feeling that a lot of students you know, like who were you know uh, like the brilliant students and who were not very much happy with the exam because you know after discussion they were very much confused about the answers because of these recall thing because most of the students reproduce recalls wrong so students those uh, who were like the brilliant students got confused about the answers and the stuff but the thing is on the day of the results they were very very much happy so uh, with all the result and with their like with all of our of efforts and with their efforts obviously so oh, one more thing the, um, let's discuss about the next spa okay so most of the time the mcqs are coming in this way so we will we are not going to ignore the diagrams okay if we keep on stand, sending I, I used to send when i'm, I'm teaching obviously in the lectures of our team all uh, doctors who will provide the lecture uh, have made a lot of uh, you know slides on the basis of these uh, diagrams but i particularly while doing the teaching the spas i particularly focus on these uh, diagrams i keep on sending those diagrams which are very important according to the exam point of view and they're coming in exam this um, this picture come, came in last uh, you, you know this uh, 2020 uh, uh, 2024 this june, uh, june exam this diagram has uh, come in the exam so these diagrams are very important we keep on teaching the students in this way that diagrams you are not supposed to ignore the diagrams most of the diagrams uh, has been provided in the recalls and they are most of the time almost you can say 90 percent of the time those diagrams are uh, repeating but the thing is that they can give new diagrams as well it's not hard and fast rule that we will only follow those diagrams and a few of the questions are uh, they uh, give in the form of diagrams so we have to remember these structures so this is an o side below what is the name given to the label diagram a this what is this okay this is zona plasuda uh, plasma membrane vetiline membrane pre-vetiline space okay corona radiator so it is so most of the students have given the answer let's check the answer okay so excellent excellent i'm, I'm very happy that you use most well, all the students wrote the right answer very well done students so this is corona radiator so corona radiator what is the basically corona radiator we not only give the picture to the students we tell them what exactly this picture is saying okay it's not about the, just a picture you people know that what this picture wants to tell this is the corona radiator corona radiator are basically the cells okay these are the cells that provide nutrition that provide support you know these uh, um, these corona radiator are the cells that provide you know these are basically the layer of corona radiator is the basically layer of granulosa cells basically that are the cumulus cell but the, well, that's around the zona placenta what are the purpose of these cells okay this is you know secondary oocyte that is a complete oocyte now it's ready to you know uh, for, uh, ready to be fertilized with the sperm and these are the corona radiator corona radiator are basically the cells that are present outside the zona placida they provide the protection to the uh, to uh, to the to the oocyte and this is a cellular layer this is a live layer cellular layer means a live layer and they provide protection to the oocyte one of the spl last year comes as that what is the outermost that was a theca layer i taught my student about that theca layer and they asked about the very next layer of the oocyte that was the they asked about this zona placida actually they ask in the exam they asked about the zona placida and uh, you people know that after zona placida there is corona radiator then theca theca interna theca externa and these this is cytoplasm this is nuclear this is oocyte second oocyte so you people need to know that to, you know, these layers and these cells and these structures okay because they can highlight any of the any of the structure and they can ask about that structure so let's uh, just overview about corona radiator. As I told you before, that these are the follicular cells adhered to the outside before it leaves the follicle. The origin of the cells are granulosa cell. 
the corona ray data is typically represented diagrammatically as a single layer. It is the fact that innermost layer of the cumulus ophorus, which is cumulus ophorus, is um, it is the innermost layer of cumulus ophorus. Sperm release hyaluronic enzyme from their acrosome to disperse the corona ray data to penetrate the zona placenta. I told you before that this is the complete full fledged secondary oocyte that is ready to uh, fertilize with the sperm. What sperm, when come, will release hyaluronic acid that from their acrosome that dispense to the corona ray data, then please the zona placenta that come inside and then fertilize this nucleus. And then it leads to the formation of, you know, zygote, marula, blastula, and the blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this uh, in this way we will uh, in one MCQs uh, uh, they they ask about this zona uh, zona plus they uh, they ask about this uh, you know this E and this F sorry what is this F this is zona plus so they ask about they can ask any of these structures so um, this is only one SP a lot of FPS four to five FPS are coming from this only single diagram okay so next question. A 26-year-old patient known to have group B streptococcus on vaginal swab is being admitted for elective C-section delivery. She has penicillin allergy. What interpartum antibiotic treatment is advised? Again, I told you about the group B streptococcus, its importance, why it is important, because it will can lead to, if delivered by the vaginally, it can lead to uh, neonatal sepsis. So it is very highly significant to treat it and to know about it. In the initial trimester, if we know about the group B streptococcus, it's fine. But in the last trimester, it's hard and it is, you know, this is it is a compulsion to know about the status of grona, group B streptococcus if female is going to deliver the baby vaginally. Okay, why I'm saying these uh, words because there is a keyword on which the on the basis of which you are going to select the answer. Yeah, all right. Okay. So, as I told you before, this is, this is a keyword on the basis of which you are going to attempt the answer. If you people got the keyword, then some, some students got the keyword and they are attempting the answer, right? Some of them are, didn't get the keyword and they are attempting the answer wrong. But don't get disheartened, just attempt the MCQs and then I will tell you what keyword I'm talking about. I was talking I, uh, I i i told you uh, about the keyword but i think you people didn't pick that no worries no worries yeah all right very good very good casting very good pile excellent okay so you people now know that what is the keyword that is elective c-section i told you that c-section has nothing to do with the group b step to focus it is only significant when baby is going to deliver vaginally. Okay, so the answer is no treatment in this particular MCQ. No, 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 no worries. It, it, it happens, it happens most of the time. Sometimes we miss the uh, keywords, but no worries. It is just a practice. Okay, once you are going through the, this kind of practice, you people eventually got a clue while reading the you know statement, you eventually got the clue of this uh, uh, you know keyword. Okay, so no treatment is answer. Okay, so according to the green top, green top line guide, and one thing more, I would like to tell my uh, the students who are going to join or who has already joined our, uh, uh, you know, this uh, course, we used to, like, uh, most of the students are talking about this green top line guideline that we are not, we didn't uh, teach them green top line. See, uh, this, um, uh, these guidelines, okay, you know, this, um, uh, all the guidelines that has been followed by the RCOG and the NHS health uh, system. See, it is not important in uh, part one, but yes, in data interpretation and clinical management, we definitely follow these guidelines and we, because these guidelines keep on updating and we have to answer according to the latest guideline. But in basic subjects, these guidelines have nothing to do with that, okay? So we have to follow the book for the basic subjects and for treatment, we definitely follow the guidelines, but we don't need to memorize these guidelines because these guidelines are coming in the part two exams once you are done with the part one exam. So you don't need to worry about the uh, guidelines while we are teaching our students, we keep on giving them the answer that has already been up updated by our team and we have already uh, read the guidelines and then we will provide students with the correct answer okay so uh, sometimes students keep on talking about these guidelines so this is very important point uh, that i feel that you people should be cleared about okay so antibiotic prophylaxis for GBS, gbs is not required in the pregnancy gbs is not routinely you know uh, checked okay this is not a routine screening test it is not checked 
until and unless a female is in the previous pregnancy is having the GPS, this GPS screening is not done routinely. But yes, when a female is going to deliver the baby, if she's having discharge, then this GPS screening is done at the time of that period. And then if she's having vaginal delivery, then uh, the treatment is needed to be given to the female. In the in if uh, intrapartum antibiotic should be given to the female. If uh, uh, you know an uh, uh, intrapartum antibiotic for GBS should be given to the female. She be, she is having GBS positive. Three gram benzylpenicillin should be administered as soon as after the onset of delivery and one point five gram four hourly until the delivery. This is the protocol that we used to follow when a female is in labor and when she is positive for GPS. But this is only followed when she is going to deliver the baby vaginally, not the cesarean section, okay? Okay, and in, if the female is in, having intact membrane and there is planned cesarean section, in the absence of there is no labor and membrane is intact. But if membrane is not intact, then we will definitely go and follow this protocol. But if membrane is intact, then we will have to follow. Uh, we will not, we don't need to give any prophylactic antibody. And in this particular MCQs, there was another clue. If they have written this normal delivery, then we have to choose clindamycin, not the penicillin, because she's already allergic to penicillin. So the answer is always clindamycin 900 mg should be administered to those women who are allergic to benzyl penicillin. I hope now you got the answer, so why this answer is correct. Okay, now a, a little bit about our uh, preparation journey that we used to follow, that strategy that we used to follow. Uh, we have 15 interactive live sessions, which, which schedule. Our students, like, uh, we have a particular schedule. One day lecture has been done. Maybe the lecture has been divided into two sessions. After that, there is five to six days in which we discuss all the SPS from all the sources. After that, there is, uh, in which we will not have only SP discussion. Students keep on asking their queries related to uh, that particular topic. They keep on asking. After that, there is subject-wise SPS on our website, which you student used to discuss. And if they have any query, we used to answer them. After that, they attempt the MOOC. After attempting the MOOC, obviously, subject-wise MOOC and recalls. And after that, there is three major big MOOC, as I told you before, in our website that is exam-oriented, that we this will allow the student to attempt uh, like few days before exam so that they have the feeling that they are in real exam and they can judge their preparation and in which in if they have any weakness in a particular subject at a particular topic if they want to discuss with us they are most welcome if they want to study by themselves then they can study okay and another 24 7 sport we are there always to answer their queries and if they want to un, like uh, uh, discuss that topic they can discuss in next session as well uh, if they want to discuss it live or if they want to discuss in group we are 24 7 available to answer their queries so this is a bit about you know my team and our uh, you know our uh, our course okay this is the course detail if you want to have uh, have any query related to the course details you can ask um, uh, uh, dr sadia you can text dr sadia you can uh, text you know our team and they will provide you with all the you know course detail and this is all about the course details and uh, workshop workshop details will also be provided to you people when we are going to conduct and that is very uh, fruitful trust me i'm not just this is not just because we are conducting it no a lot of workshop is a very much different from you know these um, uh, by, uh, these uh, you know sps and the all the MCQs you have been attempting and a lot of students have a lot of queries in the way in these um, before uh, this uh, workshop and once we are done with the workshop they were very much confident and and I have particularly witnessed this uh, the how this workshop was fruitful because in my time there was no such workshop conducted by any of this group and um, I was having a lot of you know queries why I attempted the exam and uh, um, but we make sure that all the recalls should be correct and students should have a complete grab of all the recalls that why these questions are correct and if the uh, uh, SBA is wrong, why uh, that's wrong. Okay, let's uh, move to our next SBA. Okay, this is very important question, very important question. A lot of time they are asked about uh, one, at least one question is coming from these, uh, you know, particular topics. Autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive. We taught our student in a very good way, but the thing is that uh, still it's a very difficult topic. So what is the mode of inheritance of beta thalassemia? Firstly, you have to ratify it, okay, because uh, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked recessive dominant, they keep on asking in the exam. So beta thalassemia and Firstly, they ask in such a way that what is the mode of inheritance of that uh, particular disease? Firstly, they ask in this way, this has been this way. Secondly, they ask if the parents is having beta thalassemia minor, both parents support. What is the chance of their off female offspring having beta thalassemia minor? 
mean it's mean that if a parent is having mother and father is having this disease what is the chance of their female kid to have this disease okay so in this way 25% 50% 70% in this way they also check that how much you know about the mode of inheritance and this way they ask about their mode of inheritance that either you know that how, how this disease is inherited either it's x linked either it's uh, uh, dominant recessive or autosomal so i'm waiting for the answer okay it's b okay Okay, sorry, uh, students. Okay. Okay, I need more answers, please, more answers. They are talking about the daughter pile. Okay. Just beta thalassemia dot, daughter, daughter. They are off female, female offspring. They are talking about the daughter. Okay. Okay, sorry, the question, there is a glitch in the question. If both parents have beta thalassemia minor carrier, what is the chances of their female offspring having beta thalassemia minor? Okay, if both the parents are, you know, carrier. Both the parents are, again, I'm repeating this question. Sorry, this is, there is a glitch in this answer. Sorry. Okay. So what is the modes of inheritance of beta thalassemia? Let's discuss this, this SPA. Okay. This is autosomal recessive. Autosomal recessive, uh, the, the mode of inheritance of this disease is autosomal recessive. Okay. Okay. Okay, Momina. And now let's talk about this uh, mode of inheritance. Okay. Okay, see. Sorry, this is autosomal dominant. I have put the pattern. Uh, there is a glitch in this uh, picture. So I'm um, sorry for that. Okay, let's uh, just discuss this. There is a glitch in which is the mode of inheritance is autosomal beta thalassemia is autosomal recessive. Let me again explain you that beta thalassemia is autosomal recessive. In autosomal dominant autosomal recessive, there is a there is all the kids are affected. Uh, like equally in the sense in, equally in the sense is mean that there is no female and male, male child. There is either child affected other child not affected either child carrier either child yeah, yeah. normal okay yeah. either child normal and either child ah, carrier yeah. oh. either child carrier or either child okay either child carrier either child is uh, uh, normal either child is affected uh, 50 percent affected 25 percent affected but female and male equally okay they get the chance in autosomal disease but in excellent recessive and dominant there is a there is a, uh, the thing is that this excellent trite has been uh, taken from the to the kids by the mother and the father so it depends upon either who is carrier and who is having this disease and who is carrier who is having this disease and which x is having the disease so 
on the x link there is 25% 50% female male but in auto autosomal condition in autosomal condition each child is having this disease but like each child can get the disease each child can get have is can be a carrier either it's female or it's female so in this question if both parents have beta thalassemia minor carrier what is the chance of their female spring female is just uh, given the word female is given to you to just confuse you you make you confused to so beta thalassemia minor so they are saying that how what is the chances of the kid to get the disease if like it's not carrier they are asking about the disease so in that particular case the kid is having 25 percent chances to get the disease 25 percent of the kid either female or male they have the ch uh, chances to get the disease 50% of the kid is unaffected and 25% of the kid is um, uh, unaffected but the carrier and 50% is carrier again I'm repeating 50% would be carrier either female or male 25% would be disease either female or male and 25% would be normal either female or male did you get my point this is I'm talking about the autosomal recessive triad and beta thalassemia is the example of autosomal recessive sorry for the glitch this is the wrong uh, you know uh, this uh, I'm, I'm sorry I, I didn't notice I put the wrong slide I'm sorry for that okay this is autosomal uh, I put this picture of autosomal dominant let me explain you for just for the concept so that you people memorize this thing because this has been pre degree has been coming in the exam too much and they give in such a way they remove all these things uh, you know this and they give uh, this pre degree and then they will uh, like ask about how percentages and these things is very commonly asked in the exam so in autosomal dominant one parent will be affected and one parent will be it's the picture okay okay yes 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 Nazia, i can repeat that see okay first we will move that then we will go for they ask about beta thalassemia mode of inheritance this is unfortunately you people have to ratify either which is autosomal dominant which is autosomal recessive there are the mnemonics that has been given to the uh, uh, group provided in the group but we will definitely provide you in the free group as well whenever i get um, time i'm not promising but whenever i get time i will surely uh, send some mnemonics to you people so that you can memorize okay autosomal dominant this is beta thalassemia is autosomal recessive condition okay now let's talk about autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive in autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive there is no you know there is no case of you know female male there is either the child or child child can be female child can be male either the child is carrier either the child is disease either the child is normal so now in this disease autosomal it is an autosomal recessive autosomal recessive means the one allele uh, small allele is uh, spending the spreading the disease not the dominant disease but for that purpose because if um uh, if but the effort it mean that if the, uh, uh, this disease need to be spread to the kid both parents need to be carrier did you get my point autosomal recessive mean the both parents need to be carrier to spread the disease to the next big next generation now of uh, the scenario they give is that we have two parents both have thalassemia minor positive it's mean that both parents have the disease carrier disease not the disease but they are the carrier as i told you before autosomal recessive for autosomal recessive both parents need to be uh, you know this um, carrier what is the chance of their female spring female they have given just to confuse you they can give you male they can give you female this is totally offspring either female or male having beta thalassemia minor so 25 percent of the uh, autosomal in, out, in any autosomal recessive disease it is not particularly about beta thalassemia it is uh, any autosomal recessive disease whenever there is autosomal recessive disease and both the parents are carrier then 25 percent of the generation either males or female have the disease 25 percent are the normal and 50 percent are the carrier did you get my point in order to achieve this data both the parent needs to be carrier otherwise this disease will not be spread to the generation for that, in order to spread this minor uh, uh, autosomal recessive thing, both the parents need to be carrier. This is the purpose of the pre-degree, and this is that's the uh, that's the something that has been asked in the exam very commonly. I'm I'm sure that you people are now clear about it. Any query? Or should I should we move? And now again, they talk about this. Uh, uh, I, I put the slide for autosomal dominant. See, for autosomal dominant to, uh, uh, to spread the disease, it is important for one parent to be affected and one parent to be uh, uh, not affected. If male is affected, they spread their ex affected of ex, and they have the affected daughter. Fifty percent of the daughter have the chance to get the disease. Fifty percent of the son has to get has a chance to get the disease. Like fifty percent of the kid either daughter, either son, they have the uh, chance to get the disease and 50% of the uh, kids are normal. If in autosomal diseases, 
affect if father is affected and if mother is normal if father is affected and mother is normal because father is transferring father has only one x and then but one x is transferring to the daughter one x is transferring to the this son this daughter this son and the kid is getting one x from the father okay so they are getting this then uh, this um, they are getting uh, the disease okay so uh 50 percent of the kids have the chance to get the disease and 50 percent would be the normal would be kids would be normal okay this is in autosomal dominant okay Okay, so uh, okay, Nasia, you asked about if one parent, if one is carrier and the other is normal. See, one is carrier and the other is normal, then this disease can one like few of the kids can be carrier. There is a possibility, but there will be no disease. And normal, uh, few would be carrier and few would be uh, normal. Okay, there would be no disease. Disease can only be spread when both the, both the parents are carrier. Okay, so this is the pre degree. For, this is a way. Uh, there is a way to solve this pre degree. Okay, so if we like, we will try our best to like when we. We are uh, doing this uh, biostatter whenever we get the chance we will uh, we will tell you the tips and tricks how we are going to solve the pre-degree there is a way by which we cross the you know this um alleles and in this way we are able to get the answer so uh, the purpose of this pre-degree just to teach you is that you people know that when the kids are going to have the disease when uh, in uh, in particular you know this uh, uh, this uh, uh, in uh, genetic diseases there is a particular pattern that is followed when uh, disease is going to spread from one generation to another there is a particular pattern in autosomal dominant autosomal recessive x linked dominant x linked recessive if that pattern is not followed then disease is not going to spread in that particular generation okay if there is no carrier both the parents are not carrier then the next generation will not get the disease if both parents are not carrier if one is carrier other is normal then next generation either will be carrier or normal there is no disease okay am i clear so far Am I clear so far, students? This is a very broad topic. I'm really sorry. I would like we have a lot of you know the, this SPS and there's a this is but this is a very broad topic. We will definitely uh, some other day if we conduct the free session, I will surely focus on all these autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, extreme recessive, and extreme dominant for your understanding. Otherwise, because if we once you get the clue how these uh, PDGs are going to form, you people will attempt it in a second. Okay, this is just a matter of understanding and. It's very easy, but if you are not going to understand these things, then it's difficult for you to understand, uh, to solve, because these MCQs are coming in exam very much. Okay. Okay, now uh, our last SPA for today. Okay, let's move to the last SPA. Okay, so you are assessing a patient with an ovarian mass. This is also very important MCQs and these, a lot of MCQs, every year I have, in every recall, I have seen this question. Okay, this question is coming in the exam. Uh, this uh, diff In different way, they have given this exam and you have to solve it. You are assessing a patient with an ovarian mass and are using the risk of malignancy index score. Which of the following is used to calculate the RMI? We are going to calculate the RMI. RMI has the formula in which what is the, you know, in formula what we are going to use. Can anyone answer? Okay, just answer. I'm giving you one minute and then we will move to the, uh, 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 we will move to SP, uh, to the answer. We will discuss. Okay. Very well done. Can anyone write the formula? What is the formula for this RMI one?
Okay, so RMA one is most of the time this ovarian mass, and this uh, first let me tell you what is this risk of malignancy index. This is for ovarian cancer. Okay, whenever we uh, suspect that the female is having ovarian cancer, we will check the malignancy index to see that either it's malignant or not. RMA criteria is of two types. Okay, but we are following RMA one most of the time. We are following RMA one, in which there is ultrasound score. We have to multiply that with the menopause score, and we have to multiply with that CA one twenty five. CA one twenty five, they have to give a uh, you are correct B is the answer. CA one twenty five, they will give you the value. Ultrasound score, most of the time they give you uh, uh no 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 they give you the points, and then we have to find out either the the it score is three or four by, by our judgment. I will show, uh, in next slide I will tell you that in ultrasound score like how we are going to do the score. Okay, and this menopausal menopausal uh, female female can be pre menopausal post menopausal. If she's pre menopausal the score will be one. If she's post menopausal then score will be three because ovarian cancer is very much common in the post menopausal woman. Okay, it's not necessary. Pre menopausal women also have the ovarian cancer, but. Okay, according to the criteria, postmenopausal woman it's three, premenopausal woman it's one. This ultrasound score on the basis of this this score matters very much because this is already given in the exam. This is given in the exam. I just premenopausal post this MCQ. Most of the students uh, got this wrong, and in this way they uh, uh, you know this they choose the wrong answer. They have attempted it wrong. They put the wrong calculation, and in this way one more thing, calculator is not present in the exam. So whenever you are going to uh, attempt these kind of MCQs, just attempt it by your hand. There is no calculator in the exam, and most of the students are practicing on calculator. And in the exam, I was one of them. I was not sure of uh, aware of that thing and uh, um, that's my bad luck i when i come to, to go to the exam it was a surprise for me that there is no calculator so cal do the calculation without using the calculator although it's simple but still we have don't have the practice and we lose the mass because at that time we have a too much pressure that we are not able to handle this surprising news anyways this ultrasonic feature they used to us it is multi-loculated solid areas they most of the time give you solid areas sometimes they give you bilaterally if they give if these three any any of the these threes are present if there's no feature then it's zero if more one feature is equal to one if more than one feature most of the time they give you multi-loculated ascites i have seen a lot of mcqs in which they give you multi-loculated or sometimes bilateral and ascites if they give you bilateral and ascites it's mean two criteria has been fulfilled then score is three then you will if they give you postmenopausal three then it's give you, they give you bilateral ascites three, and then if you give you CA125, whatever, if they give you 50, you will multiply 50 with three and three, and then you will get the answer. In this way, you will solve these MCQs. These MCQs are coming in exam very much. And most of the students, in uh, while we were attempting the past recalls, most of students are confusing in these, you know, uh, ultrasound findings. And they attempt almost every day, I taught them, and every day they attempt the MCQs wrong because they were not very much, you know, um, uh, familiar with these values how they are going to uh, like interpret. Now I'm providing with the time table to you and now I'm sure that you will be very confident by putting these values correct, you will be able to solve this, okay? So any query students, now it's time to wind up the session. Okay, inshallah, next session we will, uh, because at that time it's very important to give you SPS, how we are going to SPS and how we are going to break the, you know, this uh, uh, keywords and this is very important to teach the students. Inshallah, if we are like, we are able to conduct the other session, we will particularly focus about the MCQs, inshallah, and we will uh, try to uh, practice as many SPS as we can. Although we are practicing in our free group and in our recall group, we have been practicing every day a lot of MCQs, but still on live session, it is a bit uh, different. We will try to attempt as, uh, but uh, this time it's like uh, uh, it is the end of the session. If you people have any query, if you have any query, you can ask any time. Okay, if you have any query, uh, you can ask. Now it's time for you for me to stay quiet, and it's time for you people to uh, speak. And thank you so so much for all of you to giving your precious time and attempting this session. Okay. Oh yes, Dr. Sadia has requested another important question. See students. Because everyone, we are like, obviously we are mature enough. We, most of the time, most of us are housewives. Most of us are, you know, uh, doing the residencies. Most of, if we are unmarried, most of uh, you are, if unmarried, they are doing definitely the residencies in different subjects. If someone is at home, there are a lot of, you know, things to do. So early preparation is the key to success. Never think that you have, most of the time people guide you that, oh, you have two months more than enough, more than enough. You can easily pass the exam. See, 
everyone has their own circumstances any tragedy can happen sometimes i have seen a lot of my fellows like a few of the fellows that were like studying with us but they came they got some emergency some got the you know their wedding ceremony they have to postpone their exam because they didn't uh, start preparation earlier so it is important for you people to start preparation earlier and give one month one month you know this uh you know go uh, one month and additional period if you are able to attend uh, yeah, you think that three three months is enough then make it four months because one month can be for any tragic period sometimes there is, happens you have to attend some wedding sometimes you have to attend some uh day, some days there uh, we are not able to study because of our schedule, tough schedule so it's ideal to uh, keep one month uh you know for uh, extra for the preparation it's very ideal three months are more than enough to like do the preparation but it's an international exam more than you know like uh, two lakh plus you are spending if we talk about the pakistan and a lot of money and a lot of you know precious time because it has been conducted two times a year so it means that if you like fail the exam six months has been gone so it's a waste of time it's a waste of money it's a mental torture because once you are failing the exam it's a your morale will completely down and it's very difficult to get again the energy and again attempt the exam so please 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 start your preparation earlier <coughs> any sport if your people need dr sadi is always there she has been conducting the session in that group very well amazing she's uh, she has the stamina to be very honest and uh, moreover our team is also available if you people like i will definitely encourage you people to join our uh, you know course it's your choice but if you people are joining our course dr sadia dr madhura and i'm always available most of the time i am always there in the group because dr sadia has been conducting with the session and dr madhura is also giving the live session most of the time i am available in the group for the queries but trust me we are 24 available seven available for you people okay so please 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 start preparing this is very much you are spending a lot of money a lot of energy on the exam and best of luck for all the people who are taking their exam i'm sure you all will pass just give your 100% and forget everything okay one more uh, thing uh, someone wants okay dr momna you want uh, question number 1 you want me to show again okay sure 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 let me show you okay let me show you now what is dear okay this is the question okay dr momina you can read here the keywords are one is the sudden sudden swear it is sudden severe without ectopic pregnancy no pain can be presented suddenly pelvic inflammatory disease female used to have the pain okay because it is infection endometritis she is also having the pain severe abdominal pain can happen but sudden onset is not possible in any other thing except for the ectopic pregnancy other thing is that she missed the period when she is having regular period these are the two keywords okay so that's the reason there are a lot of thing this is very simple question to be very honest but in exam they give very less information to be very honest there are this kind of questions they give you very less information and there is only one or two single points on which you are going to differentiate the answer so definitely while attempting the recalls we will uh, Uh, make I, i give you a story that i keep on telling the students that in previous question we did this and in this question we are differentiating this question this way uh, a lot of uh, and recall recall uh, you know this workshop is the amazing thing because a lot of a lot of spsl we are going to compare and now at the moment i'm not able to but in recall session what we are going to do is that we have the previously in past paper we have done this and we have done in this question this is the this is the difference this is a different a lot of mcqs from a single topic has been discussed and in this way whole topic is going to clear for the student so recalls after doing the recalls you will be very much confident about the uh, about this uh, you know about the exam and about uh, how the sps are coming and how they are picking mcqs from each topic and which uh, like in each or in one topic all lines are not important only few things are important you have to pick that things and it can be only done when you are when you are done with the recalls okay so dr momina i hope you got the answer okay 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 any other query okay thank you so much thank you dr momina it's see i'm sure you're completely right okay dr sadia if you want to like uh, take the session from this uh, from onward because it's done from my side thank you so much everyone for your